Hi, it's Richie and Jake in the Sonic Dead Studios. We want to thank you for purchasing your Project 83 Sonic Micro Crossbow Mark II. Why is it called Mark II? Because Mark I was taken. Mark One was <laughs> Mark One was the popular one of our most popular projects in 56. Yes, it's been out for a couple of years now, yeah. Project 56. But here we have new and improved and hot off the press, project number 83. This one's fun because it has a little trigger and other cool features like a little bolt pull down, that's nice. Got some nice rubber grips to it. Also comes with a very cool target slash display stand. So when you're not shooting your crossbow, you can set it on your dresser or desk and show it off. In fact, we just had our patent issue on this design. Yeah, so just, just that's really week, cool. which yeah. we're ex very excited about. So let's get started building this kit. You're gonna need two tools, a size zero Phillips screwdriver. You could also use a jeweler's screwdriver and some cutters. You could use uh, flush cuts like this or some side cutters or even a pair of scissors will work fine. One of the first things you'll notice is this PDF Redemption card. Pay attention and don't lose this. You want to go to this URL, follow the directions to download your copy of the PDF instructions. They contain the step-by-step -step details on how to proceed with the building of this project. So don't lose this. And inside you'll find your plastic parts and all of the hardware. And we'll set the box aside here and let's take the parts out. It's like a Christmas gift out. unwrapping contest. It's so exciting. See, Richie lays all his stuff out. That's, <laughs> That's how, how I you do, do it. it. First thing we want to do is take our bag of small screws. We've included this little magnet holder. And what we're going to do is pour these out on top of the magnet, like that. Make sure they stick to it. That will help keep them from getting lost so they don't roll off your table. Because if they do get lost, they are very hard to find. Speaking from experience? Maybe. <laughs> you can refer to the instructions to identify all of these parts. All right, so our next step is to simply take our hex standoffs, grab the first of our 256 screws, and just begin threading those into the standoff. And you could actually do that almost entirely with your hands. There's not any friction there. But once you do have it fully threaded in, you're going to back it off about one rotation. Set that to the side. You're going to need that in just a moment and then repeat that process for a total of two. You can use the instructions to help identify the plastic parts. We're going to start with this rail, which is part number one. I'm going to take this part. You can see the grooves in the side. We want to place that down on our work surface. Then we can take the standoffs and we're going to fish them through the back like that. So I've got the grooves down and the screw heads are on the bottom, just like that. Now we can take the grip piece and we're just going to slide that over those two hex standoffs. And then we'll take the next two standoffs. These do not have screws. We don't want to put screws in them yet. We'll just put those in these two features right here like that. And then this is our center piece. And that fits over the standoffs, just like that. All right, our next step is the installation of the trigger, which is very simple. You're just gonna grab that puppy, line it up. You want the hooky part at the top and the non-hooky part at the bottom. So just place it into position like a jigsaw puzzle piece. May need a little bit of coaxing and then it'll kind of fall into where it needs to be. Then we're going to grab our next side panel, side rail, and again we want the side with these scored marks to be on the exterior. So in this case we want it facing up. We're just going to drop that again into position. And like a good jigsaw, it might need a little bit of coaxing to get it to kind of fit into place. Once it has, you're going to take two of these 256 screws and install them here at the back of your crossbow. They don't need to be cinched down really tight, but we do want to drive them as far in as they'll go without much torque or tension. And then we're going to back it off about one rotation to create a little bit of wiggle room, and you'll see why in just a moment. Now 
Now with the crossbow frame still laying on your work surface, we're going to install one of the limbs. And to do that, I'll take one of these little tiny 256 screws. I like to start it into the hole in the limb first and place it right over the top of the standoff and thread it in. And I want to back it off a little bit so it's loose. And I'll grab the second screw. Now we can flip it over. Make sure that stays together and we'll install the second one. Now that we're assembled this far, we need to make two very important adjustments that are really pretty easy. The first adjustment is to get these three surfaces completely flush. And the way we can do that is by pushing and pulling on the trigger. You can see how that center rail moves. So I'm going to pull and push on that trigger until I get those completely lined up flush like that. And then I'm going to squeeze them together with my fingers so they don't move. And while holding that together, I'm going to tighten down the fasteners on my limbs. And we'll just get this side. Okay, you can see I've got the surfaces flush now. Those fasteners are tightened down and this center rail is not going to move. For the next alignment, we're going to need a crossbow bolt. To do that, we need to modify one of the Q-tips that comes in your kit. And what I'm going to do is take some cutters and cut off one of the cotton swabs on the end there. You want to leave as much of the shaft of the bolt as you possibly can. And since you've got your Q-tip and your cutters, you might as well modify the second bolt. Okay, I want to insert the bolt right to that little spot on the hold down arm. And then what I'm doing is I, I'm, I can move this grip on the back. And what I want to do is apply a little bit of pressure down on that bolt because I, I want that snug. So with a little pressure applied there, all I have to do now is just snug up these fasteners on each side. Okay, and now we can check and see how that looks. Yeah, that's perfect. What happens when we move the bolt back, there's a little ramp in there that clamps the bolt into place. So that's what that alignment's for. That looks really good. And next we're gonna trick out our crossbow with some cool O-rings that will serve as a no-slip grip here. O-ring bling. Oh, <laughs> some O-ring bling. We're gonna trick it out with some O-ring bling. All right. So we'll install six of the small O-rings, three on either side of the side panels, and then we'll do 10 to form a handle. Jake, you should use a magnet for those so you don't lose them. Really? Well, no, it just not work. <laughs> it's not working. So we're just gonna grab our crossbow and grab each O-ring and simply pop it into position and then just kind of, using your fingers, push and wiggle and it will kind of snap into that recess. And that is it. That's all that is needed to hold it. With that complete, we're moving on to the final bling assembly step, which is taking these, and I'll, I'm gonna start at the back side, the butt of the handle, and then just kind of roll it forward. Once it snaps over that lip, then it's very easy just to slide it up the top. There you have it, your no-slip grips, or O-ring bling, is what you like yes. to call it. Now it's time to install the bowstring. What we want to do is install the first loop over the first knock in the limb. Now I'm going to need to flex both limbs to get the second loop over, and what we want to do is carefully flex the limbs the same amount, but only enough to get the second loop over this knock. If we bend them too much, there's a chance we could damage them. So just gonna bend them like that, slide that over the knock, and there you have it. That easy. All right, so next we're gonna move on to building the storage stand slash target. It's a combo unit and it's super cool, and this is how you do it. First, we're just gonna unbox, or, or I guess unbag okay. these <laughs> items. So there's a few plastic pieces, and then we've got four, no, five. I'm not good at math and counting. We've got five small screws. 
So you're going to take these two triangular pieces and you'll notice that each piece has a smooth side and a rough side. Locate the two rough sides and make a rough side sandwich. Just put them together like that. So now with the, my same screwdriver, it'll still work on these larger screws, with the T in that facing up towards me, I'm just going to take three screws and drive them through three corners of this triangle. All right, so you want to snug them down, but you don't keep going so tight that you strip the plastic out. Snug is good, strip is bad. Now that that's done, I'm just going to take these three plastic feet and screw those onto the end. And I'm just going to twist that on until it stops. You know, finger tight is good, snug but not stripped. Moving on, now we're going to attach the target to the base with this piece. You just slide that into the top groove, and once it's wiggled through, and it may take a little coaxing, once it's wiggled through, then you're going to take the target and just kind of pull down, and that'll drop just a, a quarter eighth of an inch, and snug that into position. And with that into position now, it'll just fit perfectly right there into that base. And then to secure it into that base, just flip it upside down with our two remaining screws. You'll attach the two halves. And drum roll please, because this is the last one. Same thing. I don't know if that's a drum roll or a stampede. <laughs> <laughs> it counts. All right. Excellent work, Dick. Boom, there you go. How does it come together, Richie? So to store your crossbow on your target slash display stand, what you're gonna do is line up that middle O-ring on the grip with the little groove in this retainer here and just slide it down. The idea is to pinch the O-ring. That's what's gonna keep it in place, and there you go. When you're done with your crossbow and you're going to store it for a while, it's a good idea to de-string the bow. And I'm just going to carefully flex the limb a little bit, pull that off. This will keep the limbs from developing a memory and they'll last a lot longer. We've included an extra set of limbs just in case you happen to step on it and break it or something like that. But they really should last quite a while before they wear out. Much more likely to fail due to steppage than usage, so... And that would probably hurt if you step on it. It actually foot. does. <laughs> oh, I know. Cocking your crossbow and loading the bolt is pretty simple. Basically, you're going to put a finger on each side of the rail like this on the bowstring and pull it back underneath this bolt hold down until it snaps into the groove. Now, pet peeve here, folks. This is what? A bolt. A bolt, not an arrow. A lot of folks call these crossbow arrows. These are crossbow bolts. Actually, it's just a Q-tip. No. <laughs> Beauty is in the ID holder. Yeah. But these are our crossbow bolts. bolts. Okay, with the string cocked, now we can just take the crossbow bolt and slide it under until it stops like that. So when shooting this, remember folks, don't point this at anything you don't actually want to shoot. That includes people, animals, or anything of value. So that's why we have a target. Shoot the target, not the people. Now, the best way to shoot this is to simply grab it with your two fingers here, right along the O-rings at the top and kind of sight along the barrel and pull your trigger when ready to destroy. Hey, nice and shot. There you go. Nice shooting, Jake. Now, that tipped over pretty easy. It wasn't a direct hit. It's designed to. It's designed okay, to. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's actually intentionally top heavy so that when it hit, you get this nice topple effect, which is really handy, especially for younger shooters. Yeah. You know you hit it when it tips over. It's nothing worse than not being able to claim your kill. Let's see if I can hit the target. Now my distance is 18 inches. Can you okay, do? I don't know, we'll see. Hey! Direct hit. If you have a buddy who has a crossbow like yours, you can have a shooting contest. On your mark. What's the prize? Glory. Glory? Okay. Are you gonna count? Are you gonna call it? Uh, one. Two. Hey! <laughs> I, shot the I shot the camera going like, sorry, you knocked my target down. And you go, <laughs> Don't ever shoot somebody with the crossbow. Ever. Ever. 
We're gonna try the target domino theory here, see if this works. Okay. On the count of three. Which three? My three. Okay. One, two, three. You shot it, I missed. Okay, Jake, let's try it for distance. Okay. I'm gonna calibrate for wind. <laughs> now you are aiming for the red target, right? Well, I'll tell you after I pull the trigger. Okay. Wait, are we doing it together? Yes. Okay. One, two, together. <laughs> I shot the red one. <laughs> so we, so we might need to have a slow-mo repeat. Replay. <laughs> We're going to try a speed competition. On the count of three, we have to cock it, load it, and the first person to get their target down wins. Now, do we have to do glory. it in that order? You can do it in Cock any order you want. Okay, the okay. first target that goes to Any projectile. No, no. <laughs> From the crossbow. Okay. All right, ready? One, two, three. Ah, oh, missed. You are dead-eyed. Damn it, gentlemen. Maybe we need to trade crossbow. No. Have you, have you tampered with it? Just, where, where are you shooting from? Change of mode. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Ultra distance. Oh, I actually wasn't that far off. <laughs> that is ultra distance. I wonder how the gangster shoot. Oh, I thought that would be a pizza in my hand. Okay. Okay. Gangsters don't say when, they just go. Ah! Oh, neither of us came <laughs> even anywhere close. All right, boys and girls. <laughs> Observe the accuracy of proper technique mm. in play. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can do that. Oh. It hit. It, it did hit. I, I, it was a glancing blow. It was a glancing blow. That's it for this project. We hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun putting it together. And if you had a good time building yours, then let us know about it. Down in the comments or send us an email. Let us know how your experience was. Send us pictures. Send us your videos. We'd love to see them. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, I'm Richie. And I'm Jake. We'll see you later. In addition to the 3D printed parts, you're going to need a few additional things, including nylon cord, Blah. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel. And visit our website, sonicdad.com.